Well hello again, it's Cliff here from Down Under. In this video, or these videos, I'm going to go into work holding. Work holding difficult shapes, parts that are sort of tapered in all directions, and difficult to locate and hold, clamping systems, uh, angle plates, adjustable angle plates, and I'll also go into general work holding, vices, chucks, and so on, uh, for your Tormac or other milling machine. Um, and I'll go into related subjects, probably rambling at times, uh, that are sort of vaguely connected with that as well. well. Quite often you get parts that are kind of tapered and sloping in all directions. This part's sloping in all directions, um, but it really only has this flat base surface that I can use for holding. So it's an ideal job for an angle plate. Um, and um, a couple of cap screws there with big thick washers sitting down on some parallels and with a uh, adjustable parallel there this one you've probably seen those adjustable parallels um, and clamped down onto that adjustable parallel so I've got good access there for machining um, and it's mounted on that end flat face I've got several angle plates of all different sizes and I just put slots and tapped holes in them as needed. It makes me cringe a little bit doing that but really they need to be useful devices and yes these adjustable parallels are really useful. If, if you haven't struck them before have a look online you can buy them in sets. It's a good idea to get two sets then you can make matching pairs. You just slide them into a preset micrometer and you can have exact parallel pairs of any size. Uh, they can be used for medium accuracy work as slip gauges as well for a lot of applications. If you can't justify the cost of slip gauges and you don't need the precision, you can set these quite accurately with a micrometer. So pick on some nice easy reference surfaces to reference the part for the CAD CAM XYZ0. Um, so I'm going to use this for Y0, this for X0, and this for Z0. Probe Y, set work origin. Probe X, set work origin. And probe Z set work origin. Now the software knows where the work is. Quite often use deep slotting as a way to cut out a part. Um, I was thinking about band sawing it out, you know, but that would mean putting a narrow uh, blade in to get round that radius there, and that would mean fitting narrow guides, and that would take another half an hour. And but no, no, this this works, you know. It's, it's a little bit risky just as it finally breaks through. There is a chance that it could tip in the wrong direction and jam and break the cutter. But, you know, I've never actually had that happen, so I'm getting more and more brazen and just doing it uh, like that. When you're setting up the work offsets, there's no hard and fast rule as to where the X, Y and C datums should be placed. Um, it's handy in this case to place the X datum on the face of that angle plate and the Z datum on the surface here. Um, but the Y, I'm going to shift it on these parts 
because I'm matching this shape and I'm continuing it on, um, I want the Y datum to be on this tapered shape and right at the end on that tapered shape. So I'm going to make that my Y for these two parts. Of course, whatever datums you decide to use need to reflect the same datums used when you do your CAD CAM, your CAD drawings and your CAM in C code. So here on the Y we're going to go probe Y set work origin and we'll do the X down here all right probe X set work origin which is that one and the Z well because I'm going to put a reflex cutter in I guess I should set the Z at about that point where it's going to be making its best tangent probe Z set work origin if you've got a part that's tapered in most directions but has at least two surfaces opposing flat parallel surfaces then it might be a good option to hold it in a vise but of course you can't just clamp the vise on the table it has to be tilted on an angle so you can make up a little frame or fixture so that you can tilt your vise and then you can dial it in more easily if it's mounted on a rotary table so you can very quickly per face dial in the angle with the dial indicator on the top surface of the vise and the rotary position of the vise if it's on a rotary table so that can be a good option for this type of shape part that has opposing parallel surfaces I've done a video on how you can modify a conventional vise to, to make it tiltable. I think it's called incline your vise. Um, and it's just a little simple frame that bolts on the side of a uh, vise like this. And then you can tip it up at any angle you like and lock it up with a couple of cap screws through the middle there. So there I'm just putting a convex radius with a reflex cutter on that angled, on those two angled faces. So just quickly going over this angle vise, this inclinable vise, this design is very simple because you don't have to have pre precision fitting pivot pins. There's just clearance holes there with cap screws through from the underneath and here. And... Um, when you think about it, you don't actually need pivot pins if the side of the vise is machined square. Because by nipping those screws and the screws underneath up, when you do the uh, final assembly of this tilting fixture, it pulls flat on the uh, machined faces of the side of the vise and tight against that face. And if you nip that face up at the same time, the whole assembly pulls up in such a way that the vise can only pivot in its accurate desired direction and doesn't require uh, accurate pivot pins inside there at all. It's just pivoting within those snug fitted faces. Of course you can mount a vise on an angle plate, a tiltable angle plate. For example, this design of tiltable angle plate. But the problem was with that is this type of design soon uses up most of your Z height and there may not be room anymore. Also you lose a lot of rigidity when the parts suspended up in the air like that. It has a lot of leverage 
on the machine slideways and uh, you get a lot less rigidity and accuracy. I made a special tiltable adjustable angle plate. Oh, I won't dig it out but you can see down there very low profile specifically for holding uh, work at a low angle of adjustment. While on the subject of clamps you might have seen these stepped or staggered clamps. What are they called? Goosenecked or dog leg clamps? Anyway, they're very handy because they give a lot of clearance uh, for the cutter and uh, tool holder. Um, you know, you can buy them standard of this sort of shape here, um, but I don't think it's very easy to get the extreme uh, step like this. So you can make them up, just weld, weld a piece of angle iron onto, a, onto a, a, a bar of mild steel and slot it out. And, um, it's really handy to have those type of clamps for clearance in a lot of situations. Many years ago I read the book from more tools called Precision Hole Location. Some of you may have seen that book. Um, a uh, manufacturer of jig borers and other precision machinery in the US and I really like the design of their clamps. So I copied the fundamentals of it, which is a set of little uh, brass protection blocks and a thread at the back and a slotted hole at the front. Most of you will be familiar with these cheap Chinese clamp sets and they're really good value for money and a good starting point for clamping systems. But the, the more tools design system is more elegant and versatile. Um, it's got adjusting screws at the back and uh, you just need to make up a few sets of uh, soft metal packers to give you the coarse adjustment and the fine adjustment from the threads. All right, well, thanks for watching that. I hope your coffee lasted to the end. Kiss you next time.